Let's now talk about some parameters that describe the strength, the bigness, and the power of the sound wave. We'll look at three different ocean waves to help you visually conceptualize what we'll be discussing. These shore-lapping waves are the type of waves that you might see on a nice day at any beach. They're quite small in relation to strength, bigness, and power. If you're a surfer, though, you'll wait until the waves coming in are bigger, high enough to catch a nice ride on a wave like this one here, which is a medium wave in strength and in power. A tsunami, or this enormous ocean wave, occurs in only a few places on Earth. This wave is obviously huge in both strength and power. The first term that describes wave strength is amplitude. By definition, amplitude is the maximum amount of variation of an acoustic variable as compared to the average. This definition could also be expressed as the difference between the peak and the average of an acoustic variable. Amplitude is a measure of how much difference exists between the average and maximum values of the sound wave. In a way, it's the difference between the crest and the rest. Notice on this diagram how amplitude is measured, not from the peak maximum to the trough, the minimum of the wave variable, but instead from the peak to the average, the normal resting baseline point. Take a moment to remind yourself of the acoustic variables. Pressure, measured in megapascals. Density, in grams per cubic centimeter. And particle motion, measured in units of meters or millimeters. Amplitude can also be measured in decibels. Here's another example of how you can think of amplitude. If you were able to hear ultrasound, amplitude would be comparable to loudness. Have you ever been at a party where the music is blaring and all the guys keep shouting, turn up the amps? As the sound wave travels through space, to the distance. While the amplitude of the sound is determined by the ultrasound system, it can be changed by the sonographer by adjusting the power output control. Turning up the power control will increase the amplitude, while turning down the power control will decrease the amplitude. One last fact to consider about wave amplitude relates to the way that two waves of sound can interact in either a constructive or a destructive manner. When you direct two waves that have exactly the same frequency, the same amplitude, in the same direction, the result is two waves that are in phase with one another. These two waves are exactly in the same place at the same time. The result of this wave interference is constructive, and the result is cumulative. In other words, together they produce one large wave. To help you remember, think of two speedboats. They both produce a wake, or a wave, as they travel. When the two wakes of the two speedboats come together, they are momentarily in phase and produce a larger wake than if alone. When two waves are completely out of alignment with one another, that is, the peaks, the maximum wave amplitude, and the troughs, the minimum wave amplitude, do not line up, the amplitude of the two waves is less than the original amplitude. They are said to be out of phase, or have a difference in phase, and the result is destructive interference. Think of a cruise ship. You'd expect it to produce a huge wake or wave as it travels. But because of new technology, a second wave, out of phase with the first, is created, which cancels out the first wave. This results in almost no wake behind the ship. This is an example of destructive interference. 
If you found this video helpful, please like us. And for more information about ultrasound physics and preparing for the SPI exam, visit our website at www.spiexam.com.